Hello everyone and welcome to Jumper Man Tech where we specialize in HVAC but do everything DIY and today we have a service call for a true independent freezer. Thank you to everyone tuning in to Jumper Man Tech. Today we are working on a true freezer. This is a follow-up service call. As you can see, we have a good majority of our setup. Right here, we have pretty much the warmest temperature it can get on this gauge. This one seems to be operating at about 10 degrees. This is a follow-up visit. On my first visit, I saw that everything was actually running. The compressor was running, the condenser fan motor was running, the evaporator fan was running, and the suction line was slightly cold. It's just the temperatures wouldn't go below like 55, 60 degrees. And what I did was I installed a piercing valve I do have a video on how to install those. I will leave a link in this description and you might see a pop-up at any moment. So I installed that and I found the system was low on refrigerant, almost running in a vacuum. This is refrigerant 404A and pretty much it is what it is. Nothing will happen from there. While we were looking at that, I seen a bunch of oil stains and the leak was visible by ear. So this must have just happened and I totally caught it. So today we're gonna braze that shut we're gonna remove the piercing valve and we're gonna install pigtails and we're gonna braze those in we don't want any leaks All right here's the box let's pull this thing out thank god this thing is on wheels but the way we're gonna work on this the best way is from the back okay if you guys can see I got the pick I got the piercing valve here and I took off the insulation here the leak is right here right here at this reducing coupling I'm not sure if you guys can see but if you see some stains here how it's dry there and here this is all the oil that came out so we're gonna need to brace this connection here and I also want to install the pigtail here it's gonna be a you know a permanent connection this was a temporary connection this was a self-contained unit to where we couldn't actually read any pressure. So that's why I had to install the piercing valve. I have it open right now. And this thing is completely empty. No need for a recovery. Within the short span, I actually, I must have caught it right when it happened, when it leaked out. I don't know how that happened, but I guess by the time we even came back to do this, which was a short period of time, all the gas is gone. But luckily I know exactly where it is. I'll take a quick picture of, of it. Maybe you guys can see a little gap. But we literally saw it leaking. Like we saw like the refrigerant, like the cold was coming out. But anyways, I guess the recovery is done. Let's go ahead and get rid of that piercing valve. Let's braze in our new one. Let's patch that fitting. Let's pressurize with nitrogen. And let's see what's going on here. All right, so I'm gonna use a pipe cutter to cut this edge off, brazen a pigtail, cut this edge off, brazen a pigtail, remove this, and let's get something permanent. All right, let's cut this out. Should we have the high side here and the other one will be the low side. And cut this out the way, stick a pigtail in there, and one in there. Let's stick this in. It's a pretty good connection, but I will crimp it on the edge a little bit. Right there. And the same thing for this one. It's a good connection. I'm just going to crimp a little bit of the edge. You got to be careful so you don't crimp the actual pipe. That's going to be reading pressure. just want to crimp the excess of it. I'll show a picture to see what it looks like. sand down around here and I'm gonna sand down this fitting and let's open this thing up All right. I got my licensed fire guard on duty and we're gonna brace this this and this leak let's go ahead let's light this place up smoke alarm is off fire department's called off let's do it
connected my hose, I'm running nicely to the system and I'm clearing the line in case anything got caught in there. We got about 250 pounds of pressure, it is equalized. Let's go ahead and spray these connections. Make sure my braze is held here with the pigtails and most importantly right here. Make sure nothing is leaking. Let's give it a few minutes, but looks like we're good. All right, connected my micron gauge. Look how fast that's coming down right now. 2,700, 2,000. That's a beautiful thing. Go ahead and let this go. We're gonna go to lunch. Now let's let this thing run. All right, guys, I'd say it's looking pretty good. We're at 751 microns. What we're gonna do is we're gonna close this and make sure that the vacuum holds. And from there, we're gonna charge up this system. So we're done with the vacuum. Everything looking pretty decent. This is refrigerant 404A. I looked at the unit tag. It takes 10 ounces. This is a critical charge. I already purged the air out of the hoses. Here's my scale. The blue hose, I'm gonna open it up. And we're gonna wash the ounces. We need 10 ounces, but just understand, like right now, I, I did brazen in two ports and I pulled a vacuum of both ports, but in the end, I closed the high side and I only kept one uh, hose on here because the stitching is such a critical charge. When you take off the hose, you're gonna lose that perfect charge. So what we have to do is actually add a little bit extra. So a little bit more than 10 ounces. So when you take off the hoses, there will be a full 10 ounces inside. A little bit of a guessing game here. You really want super short hoses, but I don't have that. It is what it is, but I'm gonna make this work. All right, so here's the moment of truth. Let's watch that high side, low side gauge. It's the only one connected. That should be the processing tube. I'm gonna plug this thing in. Let's see if this compressor starts. 2,000 years later. Condenser fan motor started, compressor started. Chance. Let's see what happens. All right, the evaporator fan is holding, pulling down the door switch. Let's keep this closed. Start it on its own. Let's watch this temperature gauge. Let's see what happens. As far as underneath here, we see 72 degrees. That must be the box temperature. When I first turned it on, it was about 79. It's really hot over here. So let's see what happens. Temperatures are coming down, as you can see. All right, everyone, we're actually at 40 degrees now. I definitely trust this a bit more than this analog gauge. According to this, we're at like 55. It's a 15 degree difference. I don't think you could trust this thing. I'm gonna have to get my own thermometer in here, but this is what the thermostat is going off of. All right, everyone, it's looking good. We're at 21 degrees. Water freezes at 32, so most of these products are gonna be frozen as is. This is definitely taking quite some time, but it is working and it's looking good. This says we're only like in the 30s, like about 34 degrees. Or really at 21. And then this one I noticed is above 10 or so. And I look down here and it's actually zero degrees. We're currently at 18 degrees. The machine is still running. We got a perfect charge in there with the scale and everything, so. We should be good, we just gotta give this thing some time. And this doesn't match up with the actual temperature, so this should be replaced, and so should this one. But it is what it is. We're gonna wrap this one up here. If anyone found this video interesting or helpful, please drop a like, comment, and subscribe as I come out with new videos every week. And I'll catch you all next time.